Hey guys, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. I'm glad you're here. It's another great day that the Lord has made for us as we are one day closer to the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which I believe we are on the cusp of. We are in the very last days. Today, I have an email to read to you guys that is so heartwarming, it could be a movie. <laughs> it's so heartwarming. It's so incredible. I know that you're going to be blessed by it. But before I get to that, let's read some scripture. Let's read Psalm 91 together, okay? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. Praise God. It's a beautiful song. Okay, I have so much stuff to cover today. It's a lot of trouble in the Middle East, and and I will tell you, watch the weather. <laughs> but we'll get to that. I have to read this email. It's incredible. Here goes. It's the story of Dennis and Emily. Tom, my name is Dennis, and I'm 99 years old. Across the street from where I lived nine years ago, a new couple moved in. Shortly after they moved in, I heard the man shouting, It's a girl! And I looked outside to see him attach two pink balloons to his mailbox, and then he yelled, Thank you, Jesus! Over the next nine years, I have become friends with that family, as neighbors should. I have watched that baby girl grow into a beautiful and bright young lady. Her name is Emily, and one day last week, she came over to sit and talk to me on my front porch, as we do from time to time. She said, do you want to meet my friend Tom? To which I replied, sure. She went running off to her house and came back with only her backpack. I wondered who or what Tom might be. She went digging into her backpack and she pulled out her tablet. She said as she began to fiddle with it, I hope the, the Wi-Fi works over here. And before I knew it, there you were on the scene and she said, that's my friend, Tom. And she told me to listen. We listened to your entire show. And during it, you said you were old, which she laughed and looked at me and said, ha ha, you're old, not him. <laughs> Today, meaning yesterday, because I got this email yesterday, last night. Today, Emily and I were sitting together on her front porch. And once again, she pulled out her tablet. And we watched you today, March 21st, 2024. She was angry during the part when you talked about the three young bank robbers who were kids. And then towards the end of the video, I looked at her and tears were just flowing down her face. I asked her what was wrong, and here is what she said. You have been my friend my entire life, and soon we won't be friends anymore. I asked her why, and she said, because you don't know Jesus like I do. You haven't been saved. We have talked about this very thing before, but then went on with our lives. Today, I could feel the hurt in her heart because of my not having been saved. 
Now, many of people have tried to convince me over all these years about Jesus, but I always, I'm always too stubborn or too stupid to really listen. Today, as I listened to both you and Emily, I heard someone else as well. I heard the Holy Spirit for the first time in my almost 100 years. I asked Emily to help me kneel down. And do you know that tiny little 57 pound girl practically picked me up from the chair herself. She then screamed at the top of her little lungs, thank you, Jesus. And together we knelt there on her front porch and I committed myself to our Lord Jesus Christ. Her parents came out in a panic because they didn't know what was happening. And she just waved off and said, kneel down and pray with us. He just got saved. <laughs> After a few hugs and handshakes and tears of joy, we all stood there wondering what's next. And then Emily handed me her Bible and said, you can borrow this until I buy you your own. It's going to be for your birthday. My birthday isn't until April 16th, but she made it clear that today I was a born again Christian. I want you to realize, Tom, why you do what you do each and every day. I live alone. Well, I lived alone until today, that is. And I have no loving family until today. So please don't stop what you're doing. From 9 to 99, you're reaching people. Thanks be to Jesus. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis. Oh, my goodness. Emily. Oh, my goodness. That just blows my mind. That's all Jesus. This almost 100-year-old man turned to Jesus yesterday. It's never too late. It's never too late. But I have to tell you, though, time is short. Time is short. We're getting very, very close to that rapture. But this story right here just... May the name of Jesus be praised. The way he uses people. The way he uses people is so incredible. This little nine-year-old girl with a heart for Jesus crying because her friend, her 99-year-old friend, wasn't saved. Can you imagine that little girl so much courage children I think it's why Jesus told us to come to him as children as little children because they're way ahead of the curve they're way ahead of the curve I don't know who could have reached Dennis 99 year old Dennis but Emily you know just beautiful really touched my heart I hope you guys like that okay let's see what's going on in the world the reason I said watch the weather is this one's just like get ready the United Nations, this is from the Associated Press, the United Nations will vote on a United States resolution declaring that an immediate ceasefire in Gaza is imperative. The United Nations Security Council is set to vote on a United Nations-sponsored resolution declaring that an immediate and sustained ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza is imperative to protect civilians and enable humanitarian aid to be delivered to more than 2 million hungry Palestinians. Do you know that Israel has delivered 218,000 tons of food since this began? Just, just as a side note, U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said she was optimistic that the new tougher draft resolution would be approved Friday, that's today, by the 15-member council. The draft being put to vote determines, which is a council order, the imperative of an immediate and sustained ceasefire with no direct link no direct link to the release of hostages taken during Hamas October 7th attack on Israel which was in the previous draft so they don't even have to let the hostages go but it would unequivocally support diplomatic efforts to secure a, a, such a ceasefire in connection with the release of all remaining hostages Russia's deputy UN ambassador, Dmitry Polanski, said Moscow will not be satisfied with anything that doesn't call for an immediate ceasefire, saying it's what U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is pressing for 
and what everybody wants. He questioned the wording in the draft, asking, what's an imperative? I have an imperative to give you $100, but it's only an imperative. It's not $100. That's what's going on there. Israel, uh, the, United, the United States is just putting more and more pressure day by day on Israel to not finish this job of eliminating Hamas, who terrorized them on October 7th. In a way, the worst terror attack since the Holocaust. And much of the world has no problem with October 7th. They have a problem with October 8th and forward. Watch the weather, because every time we do this to Israel, something seems to happen. Fires, floods, tornadoes. This is from the Times of Israel. Israel will enter Rafah even if the entire world turns on us, including the United States. Israel will take control of Rafah even if it causes a rift with the United States, a senior Israeli official said on Thursday night, describing the Gazan city packed with evacuees as a final Hamas bastion harboring a quarter of the terror group's fighters. The prospects of tanks and troops storming Rafah worries Washington, which says Israel, Israel must have a plan to move more than a million Palestinians who have sheltered there since being displaced from elsewhere in the Gaza Strip during the five-month-old war. They already have a plan. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has pledged to ensure civilian evacuation and humanitarian aid, measures that top Israelis' aides are due to discuss in the White House in the coming days at the behest of U.S. President Joe Biden. It's never enough. It's never enough. Whatever Israel does is never enough in their eyes. It's like, well, no, the hostages don't have to be released, but don't go to Rafah. Don't do this. Don't do that. Listen to us. I will always be on Israel's side, just just for the record. Doesn't mean I worship their government, but I will always be on their side. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Hezbollah ramps up terrorist activity in unprecedented Beirut area deployment. Arab media sources claimed eyewitnesses, eyewitness reports that Hezbollah deployed terrorists in an unprecedented manner in the group's stronghold in Beirut. I think that front is getting ready to possibly explode, but I think we could be raptured before that. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Also, Israel bolsters security during the Purim holiday. It's this weekend. Senior Israel police official says there is a growing fear of attacks by extremists, although no specific, specific information has been received. Thousands of police are to be deployed mostly around Jerusalem. An official in the Israel police force said on Thursday that during the upcoming Purim holiday and the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, there will be increased presence of security forces across the country with an emphasis on Jerusalem. This is a quote from him. We are at a particularly high level of alert. We are deploying thousands of officers to maintain order and secure the Purim festivities and Ramadan prayers with a focus on Jerusalem and the temple, the temple mount, and the protests this weekend, said the senior official. That's what's going on there. They are still fighting in the Shifa hospital. What do you mean they're fighting in a hospital? What are they doing to those poor people in the hospital? Well, there were some patients in the hospital, but far outnumbered by terrorists. An IDF spokesman said the high-ranking Hamas members, including senior internal security officers, have been captured at the Shifa hospital and they're supplying important intelligence. They identify their identity will be revealed after their interrogation. They're also saying that Islamic Jihad commanders were also captured. Most of Islamic Jihad's terrorists in northern Gaza were killed or surrendered. And they've said so far in this operation, this is what, day four, I believe, of this Shifa hospital where Israel had left Shifa hospital a few weeks ago, and then they came back 
since they came back, this is the fourth day of battles there. Well, over 500 terrorists have been captured at this hospital overall. Many surrendered. Terrorists are still barricaded in emergency room. Fighting at the hospital will continue, they're saying, now for days. So over 500 terrorists have been arrested and 140 have been killed. So you're talking about 640 terrorists in a hospital. There you go. In a hospital. But you know what? You look at the mainstream media and you know what they'll tell you? Israel's attacking in a hospital. They'll leave out all the details we just talked about because they always do. All right. This is from Jack Basobia, his Telegram account. It was a really, really bad 24 hours for Ukraine. So pray for those people. He said, Ukraine is getting blasted tonight. He put this up at about midnight Eastern Standard Time last night. Ukraine is getting blasted tonight. Missile strikes in multiple major cities. One of the biggest aerial bombardments of the whole war. It seems to be targeting power grids, communications, and air defense. A little later, Insider Paper released this. Russia attacked Ukraine overnight with over 90 missiles and 60 drones. Russia launched a massive wave of deadly overnight attacks on Ukraine using over 90 missiles and 60 Iranian-made drones. President Zelensky said on Friday in one of the largest offensives recently. Uh, as of 8 o'clock this morning, they said 700,000 residents of Kharkiv are stranded and without water after the launch of 17 Russian missiles and fires broke out in many places. So pray for, pray for our friends in the Ukraine and also pray for the people in Russia as we do a lot. Taiwan admits the United States troops are now stationed on islands off the coast of China amid fears the region will spark World War III. This is the world we're living in right now. Don't let it trouble you if you belong to Jesus. Because we look at all this stuff ramping up around the world, the wars and the rumors of wars, and we just know we're, we're not going to be here for the seven-year tribulation. And boy, does it look like it could start at any time. And we're going to be raptured before it. So I'm watching the skies every day. I'm waiting for Jesus. And my hope is in Jesus. And my security is in Jesus. And my lack of fear, seeing all these things happening all over the world, is because of Jesus, because I belong to Jesus. He's got this. He's not rattled. He's actually, I think he's probably really excited. Probably more excited about the rapture than we are. And we're waiting for him. And we're going to do this every day until he gets us out of here. Or he decides he doesn't want me to do it any longer. But it'll be his decision. I'm committed to doing it until the day we're raptured. There was a huge earthquake in Indonesia's Java Island last night. Middle of the night, I think 6.4 earthquake in Indonesia. In the last 24 hours, they picked up a bit. There was 42 earthquakes over 4.0. There were seven over 5.0, and there was one over 6.0. So that's what's going there. Oh, listen to this. Whew. Incredible. This is from Newsweek. Leprosy is spreading in Florida. Leprosy is on the rise again in the United States particularly in Florida, concerning disease specialist. According to the World Health Organization, about 200,000 cases of leprosy occur every year in 120 countries worldwide and are often associated with contact with armadillos. The United States is experiencing cases, uh, they're creeping upwards, with the number of infections across the country more than doubling over the past decade, both in people exposed to armadillos and those who aren't. According to a report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention last year, there were 159 new cases of leprosy in the United States, and in 2020, around a fifth of which were in Florida. Of the Florida cases, 81% were found in central Florida. 
Who'd ever think we'd see that? I mean, I know it's always been there. But man, this is just, I think it's just shadows of the seven year tribulation. Because there's going to be some serious plagues and pestilences. And you don't want to be here for that time period. There was an Instagram worldwide outage yesterday. And they said many, 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 many people were being logged out automatically. So when I saw this, I always like to verify. I went to Instagram and the moment I opened it, I looked at one thing and it said, you have been locked out. So <laughs> it happened to me too. I don't know if it's back. I don't really look at it all that often, but uh, yeah, worldwide though, they said outage. This is from CBS News. South Africa water crisis sees taps run dry across Johannesburg. Johannesburg confronts an unprecedented collapse of its water system affecting millions of people. Residents rich and poor have never seen a shortage of this severity. While hot weather has shrunk reservoirs, crumbling infrastructure after decades of neglect is also largely to blame. The public's frustration is a danger sign for the ruling African National Congress, whose comfortable hold on power since the end of apartheid in the 1990s faces its most serious challenge in an election this year. People of South Africa have been through a lot. They're going through a lot. They have very, very poor leadership right now. Very poor leadership. Okay, this is a little bit of Clown World. We gotta, we're gonna take a leisurely stroll through Clown World, okay? AI influencers explode on social media and some are controlled by teens. Okay, here's the heartwarming story. Here's a little heartwarming story for you, okay? I'm gonna read it. Agnes, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try to read it without being too snarky or laughing. Agnes, a bespeckled 20-year-old poet, likes tarot cards, and late-night philosophy debates. She has a crush on Finn, a 22-year-old farmer who knits in his free time. Finn's friend Jade, 22, also lives in the countryside where she forages for mushrooms and she bakes bread. Jade, Finn, and Agnes are influencers who frequently post selfies and life updates, but none of them actually exist. They are the creations of 1337, a company that designs and operates artificial intelligence generated online avatars, sometimes selecting what to post based on the advice from real life teenagers. Isn't that sweet? They're influencing people. That's what influencers do. They influence. And real teens, I guess, aren't interesting enough to share their lives. So they're strolling through Clown World, sharing these three clowns in Clown World. <laughs> oh boy, please come back, Jesus. We're ready. We're so ready, Lord. All right. How about, let's do a testimony of the day, okay? This one is from Christ Lives. Tom, my dad fought in Vietnam. Then he came home and got killed while cutting the grass in his front yard. One sunny day, when the tractor seat broke and he fell, the blade hit his head. It killed him. We had his funeral the day before Father's Day in 2019. God used that tragedy in my life to open my eyes to the realization of what kind of a person I had become. As I sat there listening to the preacher speaking about my dad, it occurred to me that if he would have lived to see Father's Day, I hadn't even bothered to mail him a card, nor would I have called him to say hello. Our relationship was estranged, and we hadn't spoken in years. There was so much left unsaid. Now I will have to wait until I get to heaven to say those things to my daddy. In my distress, I cried out to the Lord, one morning I fell to my knees and said, Lord Jesus, if you will give me the strength to stand up from here, I will never touch another pain pill. He heard me from his holy temple. My cry went up to his ears. Praise God, after 15 years of taking six to 10 a day, I quit. By the grace of God, I went through the worst 
withdrawals and could not eat anything without getting sick for 26 days. It's been years ago, and I have never had a single craving for any pill since I asked Jesus to be my savior and come into my hopeless situation and restore my family. And my life is a testament to your unfailing love and mercy, never looking back, only looking forward to being home with the Lord Jesus one day. Shalom and Maranatha. It's a very powerful testimony. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Praise God. Praise God. Let's do some comments of the day. Jesus in the clouds. You know who I talk to on a long, lonely drive? Jesus. Jehovah God. It's a great time to draw closer to them. They are such good listeners, and I feel instantly better no matter how rough my day. People don't need AI buddies. They need Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. This guy named Tom. He said, we are born sinners and are headed for eternal destruction. There is no remedy for this other than the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The first Adam plunged the whole world into sin, but by one man's sacrifice, sin and death were defeated. Believe it and be saved. Romans 5.19, for as by one man's disobedience, Adam's, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, the Lord Jesus Christ, many will be made righteous. Praise God forever and ever. Amen, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. Beverly, you talk about prayer taken out of school. I was in elementary school in the 1950s. I was not raised in a Bible-believing home, but I would sit and look at the Ten Commandments on the wall. Then the Gideons would come and pass out little New Testaments. I still have mine from when I was 10 years old. I was not saved until I was 23 years old, but I know the seeds were planted that I saved the New Testament. I did read some as a child with no understanding, but praise Jesus that he saved me. Looking back now, looking back how things begin to change when prayer was removed from schools. Yeah, there was major changes. Major changes. It was the, the downward spiral of our country when they took prayer out of schools. Downward spiral. Sarah, I'm heartbroken for what is happening to America, but I'm looking forward to my new home with Jesus. That's your home. That's that's a much better home. We have a much better home to look forward to than where we are now. You know, America has been a very blessed country. And I've always said it's the greatest country on earth, but we are watching it go bye-bye. Darren, the Bible says that the world will keep waxing worse and worse. We're watching it all unfold, literally. Yeah, we are. We are literally watching we're just, we're waiting for that rapture. Listen to this one. This is a good comment. Bill, I was in kindergarten in 1963. Our teacher, Mrs. Walsh, asked us kids if we could keep a secret. When we responded yes, she had us sit in a circle holding hands. And she said she could lose her job if we told anyone. She explained that President Kennedy had just been shot and she wanted us children to pray with her. Mrs. Walsh led us children in prayer for President Kennedy. One child did not keep the secret, but Mrs. Walsh did not lose her job as many teachers and children in our school elected to pray that day. Wow. Wow. What a memory that's got to be for you. Mrs. Walsh probably blessed a lot of children that day. I bet you... I bet you none of those kids forgot that. We're watching darkness in this world increase. Every single day, we're watching darkness increase. But that gospel message that Jesus rescued us on the greatest rescue plan that's ever been 2,000 years ago when Jesus came here and left a throne in heaven to come here and he put on human flesh. 
He lived a perfect, perfect life. He never sinned once. And then he got brutalized and nailed to a cross. And he shed precious, beautiful blood. And some people get offended when I call the blood of Jesus beautiful. I just don't think they have a clear understanding of what that means. What that means for the world who will embrace and have faith in that blood. It's, it's eternity. Jesus bought us with his blood because he paid for every sin we'll ever commit, have ever committed, ever will, future, past, present. When we have faith in that blood, our sins are washed away. They're gone. We're washed white as snow by that beautiful blood that Jesus shed. I know it's violent. I know it's graphic. I know for some people it's hard to hear. But it's the way the system has been set up since the foundation of the world. That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sin. But God loves us. That's what makes the blood beautiful. God didn't just say, look, you sinners, you have no hope. I told you don't sin, you did. So just go off, go away. When you die, you will be eternally separated from me. I got a place prepared for you. It's called hell, so go to hell, you guys. No, that's not what God said. God sent Jesus. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what God did about the sin problem. He sent his only begotten son. How miraculous is that? And Jesus knew. He knew he was coming here. And he was going to eventually, he knew he was shedding his blood to take care of the sin problem. And he paid for our sins, all of them, with his blood. And all you have to do, you have to admit you're a sinner. You have to understand, well, I am a sinner and I need payment for these sins. And Jesus, you shed that precious blood that when I believe in that blood, that it can remove my sins and wash me white as snow. When I believe that, it happens. It happens. When I put my faith in that blood and say, every one of my sins I'm placing in that blood and now I'm washed white as snow, you are. And then you believe in Jesus' finished work, that he went to the cross and he died and he rose again on the third day and he's coming back. And he's coming back soon. But once you believe in the, you have faith in that powerful, precious blood and you believe in his finished work, you're saved. Like Dennis was yesterday. You're saved. You're born again. You're rapture ready. You're sealed until the day of redemption. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. You will have the most incredible future being a part of the immediate family of God for eternity. How's that? You ever stand near the Grand Canyon? You ever get the opportunity to do that? Or Niagara Falls? Seeing the beauty of nature? Well, you're looking at a broken world. Jesus has something for you for eternity that's perfect. It's going to put this beauty on earth here to shame. Jesus has things prepared for us we can't even comprehend while we're in this flesh. Beautiful. But you know what? If you heard this whole message and you're like, yeah, yeah, great. Not for me. I don't need that. Then you're rolling the dice on eternity. And without Jesus, the dice never pan out in your favor. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Believing in that blood and believing in his finished work. If you say to your dying breath, I don't need that. I'll take my chances. I'm more good than bad. Then you're going to face Jesus on judgment day. And you're going to know your sins are still with you. And he's going to say to you, away from me, I never knew you. 
Can you imagine that moment? Imagine what's on your mind at that moment. Where am I going now? What's happening now? And you get led off to a place that wasn't created for you. It was created for Satan and his angels. God didn't create hell for mankind. God sent his son to die to pay for the sins with his blood of mankind. But if you don't want the payment, if you I don't want to believe in this. I don't want to. No, no, I just opt out. Then your sins aren't paid for. And you're sending yourself there. God's not sending anyone to hell. When you reject the message of the payment that was made for your sins, you're setting up your eternal destination. I wish... Uh, I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't want anyone to miss the rapture. When you understand what's coming so soon to this world, I don't want anyone to be left behind here while we're celebrating the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven for seven years. But why does the path to destruction? So many more people will hear this and say, no, I don't need that. Then we'll say, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Where do I sign up? Uh, today, today is a day of salvation. Today. Let me just do a simple scripture to end this video. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. Just call out to him. Tell him, yes, I believe in you. I believe in your blood. I believe in your finished work. Save me, Jesus. He will immediately all right today is the day of salvation don't put it off all right i'm going to shut the camera off now and i'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video and if we're not raptured today and man today is a perfectly good day for the rapture but if we're not god willing i will see you guys tomorrow i love you guys